Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Matt, and welcome to the Poke Check Podcast, Episode 7. Pretty exciting times right now for me and my co-host, who's coming back for his second appearance. Mark andre Fleury has been traded to the Minnesota Wild and, uh, as of last week and uh, recently played in his first game. So I figured uh, who better to bring back than my fellow Flurry uh, collecting friend, Chris. And uh, Chris, how uh, how are you feeling about this whole Minnesota Wild deal? Because uh, I know for me at first I was not too excited about it just because I wanted him to go back to Pittsburgh. But as you know, did you. But how are you feeling about it now that he's played in his first game? Uh, again, thanks for having me back, Matt. Uh, appreciate hey, it. Love the content. Um, but yeah, I was, I wish I would love to know what happened with the discussions between Pitt and him, but, uh, I'm excited. Uh, like he said, he's going to pick a winning team and, uh, he went somewhere he was confident and comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like we discussed already, he got his first win last night. That's a good way for him to build his confidence and the team to be confident with him behind them. Right. So, pretty exciting. Yeah, man, it was uh, it was a heck of a game too because you know I was I hadn't been excited to watch Flurry play since I got to be honest since like the beginning of or the end of the playoffs last year I didn't watch his last game in Vegas where they lost I think four to one or five to two or something like that mm-hmm. and but they, that was game five against Montreal uh, but this was the first time I was legitimate excited about the you know the idea of flurry playing for them because he's on a winning team now you know and and i think that knowing you can go to the playoffs and make some noise is is means so much and he's going to play for a team that's pretty much the same they made a few moves other than getting flurry and to make them stronger defensively and you know it took them to seven games last year uh they they looked better than colorado last year if i'm being honest and uh so yeah, because of that, I was really excited, and I just you know we watched the highlights together there about ten minutes ago, and uh, to see Flurry making his usual big saves at key moments, uh, and to have them score you know six on five with a minute to go, and and just see the you know the talent of Kaprizov shine through. I mean, he's I told my dad this last year when I was watching them play Vegas. I'm like, Dad. This Kaprizov guy, he just moves differently on the ice. And I, honestly, if I'm straight up with you, if it wasn't for Mark andre Fleur, I don't think Vegas wins that series. He was on – I mean, the first three games, he was incredible, right? Like he yeah. – I think they lost one nothing. I know Talbot had more saves. But Fleury had some incredible saves in game one mm-hmm. against them. And then, you know, game two – same thing, game three had a shutout, so they were up two games to one, and then they went all the way to seven games. But if it wasn't for Flurry, they don't win that series. Uh, you remember that, don't you, that yeah. series? Yeah, and like, to your point, too, it was evident whenever they played Montreal where when the team fell apart around Flurry, it wasn't all Flurry's fault. But having Minnesota now with some scores, let's see what they can do in the playoffs. So right, nice to see Kaprizov versus Kale. <laughs> Yeah, that that's going to be something else too, man. What a rookie matchup that's going or was a rookie matchup, but yeah. um yeah, so I, I mean them just having and, and you know honestly the best part about Minnesota is how hard they play on defense. Like yeah. they were blocking shots and like getting in lanes and, and like flurry we watched both the goals. <clears throat> the first goal, you know, they're scrambling around, he's fighting, he's fighting just a mighty ducks type thing like you said a lucky bounce for you know columbus and he moves his pad to like stop like cut off a certain area of the net and he ends up kicking it in his own net obviously like not it wasn't like oh there's the puck accidentally kicked it in he they were scrambling and there's like six guys there happens to go in okay great battle by columbus but the second one screened by his own guy pucks coming too late goes by him but i mean he made some you saw the end of the second period he made some of his signature saves and then and OT to be staring down line A on a breakaway. I mean, that's one of the best shooters, as his coach said, a world-class shooter. Yeah. And he just challenged him, man. He came out and took it right off the left shoulder, and uh, they ended up going down and scoring an OT about 30 seconds later on Spurgeon's uh, backhander. So to see them battle on defense in front of him and accept him the way they have, I was smiling for like two, three hours after the game just mm-hmm. knowing that, you know, the way that we support Mark Andre Fleury, how much we love watching him play and, and want him to succeed this late in his career, that he could potentially be on a team that he's 
going to be able to call home uh, for the next year or two, I would think, depending on his career. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts as far as that goes? Because we both want him back in Pittsburgh for the last year. Mm-hmm. Back up Tristan Jari if you have to, whatever. Do one last hurrah. Um, or do we think, look, Bill Guerin's the GM, former teammate, loves Mark andre yeah. Fleury. That team is very tight-knit. They've only added pieces. They haven't really lost any of those major pieces from last year. Do they rework contracts and do what they can to keep that, you know, tandem of Talbot and Flurry together for the next year or two? I mean, I would think that would be a smart plan, but. Yeah, and clearly they made the move for him. So I think he's appreciated there. And then with the history with Garen, you know, they won a cup together. Literally the one knock against Flurry is he was only on ice for one cup and that was the one with Garen. So yeah. do they build that team and finish his career off there. You know, right. we, uh, we had talked earlier about, <clears throat> Flurry went to the Blackhawks and he was kind of, we all knew the way the season was going to go, but to see them get their first W yeah. now moving forward with a winning team, what that does for the locker room and what Flurry does for the locker room. It's, I could see them keeping that team together. And, right. And uh, again, I don't know what Pittsburgh was thinking. I just watched the game against, uh, it was five to one. I can't remember who they lost to, but it was bad. Well, and then they made up for it today. They crushed yeah. the Red Wings. They beat them like eight to two or something. I mean, it just just they were up eight two. Like they were just bringing it to them, man. Who was on? Who who played? For, was that the Smith that was in net or not? I'm not sure actually. Um, I was so locked in. I'm usually good on the goalies. You know, I'm always checking yeah. box scores and stuff of all the goalies. But when I see eight two, I feel bad for whether it was Nadalkovic or probably him and uh, Pickard that played that yeah. game and just got lit up. It's like, man, um, I would think it would be hilarious. I, they're on opposite sides, right? Like Pittsburgh could, if they, everything worked out, could Minnesota play Pittsburgh in the final? Is that, is that? Yeah, they that, that could work out. Um, yeah. Remembering now they played the Rangers. Shesterkin actually shut down Pittsburgh completely. Dude, he's, Rangers, Rangers were all over him. And I'm sorry. It's like, I know Jari, has been having a Vesna level season, if some people want to say it. He made the uh, All Stars, uh, but it was a completely different goaltender in net. Whenever he was, people were buzzing around him, and I think it's just going to be the same thing in the playoffs, where right. I, Pittsburgh wants to have faith in him. They're going to show confidence in him, but I think it's going to be a different story round one, because if they were to end today, they would face New York in seven. Right. And uh, well, <clears throat> I don't know if it ends well for Jari. I'm sorry. <laughs> well. But you never know, man. I mean, one playoff series they could change everything. Yeah. You know, he could have a good series and 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 beat out Shesterkin and the Rangers, and then our confidence, Penns fans' confidence changes. It's uh, yeah. It, it, I think we both just were dreaming. We were having these dreams about Mark Andre. Like, all right, Jari had a tough game. Sorry, but Mark Andre, get in there. They win the series, and it's like it's your net. We yeah. to a championship type deal, and. Uh, you know, we might still have that that chance, but my thing is this, like, unless it works out, for him to be able to say, Minnesota's my home, Cam, he and Cam Talbot become good good teammates like he and Leonard were, and just alternate the guys. Every other game is yours, no matter what. No matter if Cam or Mark andre gets a shutout, every other game is yours. And and that way they're both fresh. Yeah, you know, fresh, you can, yeah. You got a one and one. You don't have a one and one A. You don't have a one and two. You have a two number one goaltenders that are both staying fresh. And if one of them gets hurt, the other one can carry the load, you know. And I think that is a better situation in, in a way um, than Pittsburgh because I think if he went to Pittsburgh, I'd hate to not see him play. <laughs> I want to yeah. see him play every day, every game. But, you know, um, I think it would be tougher on Jari too because he he's the man right there. And if you bring in – you know, Mark Andre Fleury. There's a lot of pressure to perform, and and on both guys. And yeah. So this well, might that might have played into Hextall not yeah. bringing him in. What do, I mean, yeah, I think think that's the thing. yeah um, certainly because I mean, Fleury could easily take over. Um, I'm still a little jaded the fact that if Fleury ever messed up, he was always the scapegoat and he was out. Yeah. Even if it was the playoffs and he won two rounds prior, Murray was always shooed right in as soon as Fleury made one little mistake. Yeah. Um, Jari would his confidence would probably suffer. So like you said, Hextall probably saw that as a move to not make. Right. If they were going to show confidence in their future goaltender, especially because he has been having a, a decent season. He has a good yeah. team in front of him. He's been making some stops. I watched yep. a bad game um, all around for the whole team. I could barely tell Crosby was on the ice, but you know, nobody says a word because 
he's not the one that gave up five goals. Yeah, it's it's a thankless position if you're not doing amazing every game. And I actually watched the 2016 Cup DVD mm-hmm. that was on YouTube. And, and the way the coach gushes over putting Matt Murray back in, he doesn't give up rebounds. This and that. I'm like, okay. And I, and I think – if I'm being honest, there was a little part of me that was worried about Sullivan coaching Flurry again because he was so used to benching him already. Yeah. Um, I just I think it would take a new coach and uh, you know that a different approach. But they had a chance to go get him when he didn't want to play for Chicago at first, and he didn't take you know Hickstall didn't go for him. So I uh, unfortunately think that that chapter is closed. But uh, I think we can both agree he's confidently going to retire as a Penguin. I think he'll go or, you know, he'll go into the hall as a Pittsburgh Penguin first and foremost. I think they do a one-day contract thing or or whatever they need to do to honor him in Pittsburgh, have a a night that's dedicated to him. If he says it's his last year when they end up playing there, they do something for him. I think Uh he's – he's. I know that he's earned that. But uh, I have to say, you know, I I did that interview for Fan Nation, and it was so much fun to, in a way, gush about – what flurry has meant to the city of Pittsburgh and oh, Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins fans and, and how much I know they still love him there. I mean, just, just go back. If you ever want to smile, go back and watch that tribute that they did for him. The first year he played in Vegas and he's, uh-huh. they're cheering and cheering. And he's starting to tear up. I mean, yeah. Um, I think if he ever went back there, they would accept him with open arms. I just hope that the, the coach would do the same. <laughs> yeah. So so that kind of makes me wonder why they sent a scout in the first place. Was that just for public image and they knew they weren't going to pick him up or make a, a run at him or yeah, were they no, actually that's genuinely question. interested? Do you think they made an offer and we just don't know about it? I mean, again, I'd like to know, you know, what, what goes on behind the scenes, like what fell apart to not make that happen or, or were they worried, you know, they didn't want to have a one, a one B thing again and yeah. they wanted to put it on Jari since he is the future and not going to retire after one year. Well, I think it came down to, to a lot of things, but I was, you know, really looking into <clears throat> the dynamic of Bill Guerin, who's a former teammate, also the GM of Minnesota. So you've got the confidence, 100% confidence from the GM, then telling the coach, hey, this is what I'm going to do. But the coolest thing was is when they asked him, what did Cam Talbot say about this? What did Cam say? He said, very first guy I talked to when I was making, getting ready to make this move was Cam Talbot because mm-hmm. – and he, he was very uh, adamant. I'm going to quote him here if I can remember. Um, oh, I, it, it was a phrase. He said kind of, it wasn't a bad word, but it was a very clear phrase that basically meant nobody's going to be a sissy in the locker room. Like those two are coming here to play and neither guy is going to complain or whine when the other one plays. He's like, that's not what we're here for. We're here to win. And having those two guys gives us the best chance to do that. And I'm like, you know what? I like that. Like, they're just coming in and, and they're going to equally be responsible for winning and losing games. And, mm-hmm. and I think I want to see that coach take that approach to it. And I'm curious what he'll do in the playoffs. though, cause he's, you know, a hot goaltender can lead you all the way to the final. You look at Jonathan quick, the year that LA won yeah. that first year, they were an eight seed. They barely got in the playoffs and then he got hot. That team got hot and they won the whole thing. So uh, I can name plenty of others. You know, last last year, Carey Price did, you know, Montreal went all the way just off a goaltender and they weren't expected to do anything. After the first game, I thought they were Vegas was going to destroy that team. And uh, sadly, um, Carey Price became playoff Carey Price. Woke up Carey uh, Price, yeah. Yeah, among other things. But uh, yeah, so I think all said and done, this seems like the best possible situation. I'm so glad he didn't go to Washington. He actually said today, it quote, he quoted that uh, it didn't just didn't feel right to go to Washington. So we no, didn't go. Yeah, still pen at heart. And I'm so glad that he's not there. I mean, this, this just feels like the love that the Minnesota fans have for him. This just feels like it was, it was, I mean, you heard him say the announcer called him wildflower. I'm like, that pretty much has a good ring to it. Yeah. That does, it had a great ring to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I think it's a good situation overall. Yeah. I think it's it's, it's going to end yeah. up working out great for him, man. Genuine hockey town. I hope they do well and they make a run at it because uh, it would be nice to see. When when Kaprizov tied the game with a minute to go yesterday, I mean, you saw that goal. That was the, I don't even know how it got through. I jumped up and screamed. I was in my bedroom watching on my computer, and when he scored, I jumped up and like – but I couldn't even see it going. I just reacted to all the fans freaking out. But that place was so loud. It reminded me yeah. of 
watching Vegas in the playoffs last right? year. Yeah, I mean, right. when that when that arena's going, oh man, like it reminded me of down two to one against Colorado, game three. I know it's a regular season game yesterday, but if they lose that game, they're down 3-0. And Marsha so scores. And then about 30 seconds later, uh Pacaretti or Pacaretti scores on the deflection. And that place was like the cameras were shaking. Like yeah. It was definitely that loud in there, and uh, I, I made myself uh, – I, I kind of introduced myself on the Minnesota uh, Wild Reddit page last night. And yeah. uh, there was a couple of fans that were talking about being at the game and said, this is my first game. I can't believe how loud it was. I'm like, oh, this is making me so happy. So yeah. um, really, really thrilled and excited for what this is going to hold. Let, let me get a prediction from you. Let, you know, just realistically looking at the fact that it's probably going to have to go through the avalanche again. Um, where do you see realistically, if you're a betting man, which I know neither of us do that nonsense, but uh, if you're a betting man, where would you say the wild finish this season? I mean, they're, I think, like you said, they're going to get Colorado in the first round. Um, I think wouldn't be, no, it would, no, no, no. Second round, you mean, right? Probably yeah. coming around. With, if they get the fourth seed, yeah, or the fifth. I'm trying to remember how this seeding goes. It goes one eight. Who who plays the one eight? The it's not the two winner of the two, whatever. Obviously, it's the winner of the four five, maybe. Right. Yeah, I'd have to look at it again. Um, but like you said, I think it goes through Colorado. Yeah. Um, if they get to the first easy. round, you know, <laughs> it goes the the one they're looking at is Colorado. Yeah, but you can't overlook the team that you get first. If they get like the fourth seed, that would put them against the fifth seed. Um, let me yeah. let me just take a peek at the current standings. That way we can sound like we're informed. I, was, being yeah. right I was gonna tell you at the beginning of the season, I'm, I have a few buddies that travel and do all the stadiums as much as they mm -hmm. can between uh the NHL and MLB. So we were planning at the beginning of the year a trip to Minnesota and then going to Winnipeg. Right. And then just with everything happening and then everything getting squirrely in Canada, it changed to Minnesota and then a baseball game in KC uh, once baseball got started back up. Uh, and as soon as that happened, it was like, hey, Minnesota's in the discussion for Flurry. I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm like, hey, what? <laughs> I I'm back in because yeah. I originally, if it was only going to be just Minnesota just for a hockey game, I wasn't going to go. Oh, um, man. I'm so be, jealous. Well, I want to go so be, bad over my spring break and i'm just like uh yeah um even now if it's just a hockey game i'm gonna gotta go to minnesota just to oh. see flurry and hope he's in net you know so well if they're sticking to the plan it'll be like we talked about every other game so you can kind of look at the rotation uh yeah. Talbot, talbot's playing right now so here here's what we're looking at uh if the playoffs now they're playing colorado right now they're only winning one zip so i'm gonna assume that that's gonna change Colorado's way ahead as far as points go, uh, which is pretty spectacular, honestly. Um, so Minnesota right now, though, is third overall by a point against L.A. I cannot believe how good L.A. is doing this year, but they are. But it's so tight. Like if you look at third through eight, there are, there's only six points separating third place through eighth place, mm -hmm. uh, through eighth place. But if the playoffs started now. The one plays the eight, so Colorado would play Vegas, which that would be hilarious because they'd get revenge on them. Calgary would play Edmonton. Minnesota would play Nashville, and I would I would think that they'd be able to beat them in a seven-game series. You'd like to think. I mean, Saros is a fantastic talent in that, but I think they can they can handle them. So if you look at that bracket, does I think the three six would play the winner of the one eight? Right. Yeah. So that means they would play Colorado. I don't see Vegas beating them. I really don't. Um, but if they end up losing or winning, I mean, getting to the two seed would be tough because they're six points behind Calgary and I don't see them losing three games in a row and Minnesota winning three or whatever. But if they were to drop to four, they would play the five, which is going to be, again, it could be Nashville, could be Edmonton, which, the Blues. you know, starting off against Edmonton in the first round, that wouldn't be much fun. Um, so it's going to be, I mean, dude, I can't wait for playoff hockey. It's so fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, do you think, assuming that they get to Colorado, do you think they have a chance to beat them? I think it goes to seven. Honestly. I mean, we know flurry. I mean, they, they fought off a lot. Like you said, last night, they're right. playing them right now. We, it's so unpredictable. 
but I think, you know, you build the confidence making the run through the first round, you get Colorado, it'll be tough fought. Whoever gets right. out of that game or whoever gets out of that series is probably going to go uh, to the final. Yeah, it's a lot of good teams, man. Calgary's good. Edmonton, you never know what version of them you're going to get. Could yeah. get the six goals a game version, or you could get the two goals a game and give up eight or give yeah. up seven or six. So like, Flurry's faced a lot of shooters in the past, but again, yeah, like who's going to be the hot goalie? If Talbot ends up going through the whole thing, you know. I, I uh, that, That's so tough. Knowing you have Mark andre Flurry sitting on the bench in a tough game – that, the playoffs, I think, is where it kind of goes out the window. You saw Fleury played every game until he made the mistake in Montreal, and then he benched him, which I still think was a terrible idea. You yeah. don't bench him after that. You let him try to get it back. But at that point, Fleury had played every game. So yeah. um, it's going to be interesting, though. It'll be interesting to see. Um, it's going to be hard to – I mean, to, to root as hard for them if he's just benched the entire playoffs because you, we saw that with Pittsburgh – but I would think that Bill Guerin did not trade for Mark Andre Fleur to have him sit the bench during the playoffs. So, yeah, um, you know, we'll have to see. But, anyways, uh, yeah. So you're thinking, you're thinking, if they could beat Colorado, that gives them a, be- a pretty good shot at making it all the way, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, There's a lot of confidence off of that series. I don't think they're gonna. I mean, even if they do beat each other up, it's that's hockey. Everyone's doing the same thing. I think once they get past that series, though, uh, it should be. All right. They've earned it, and I think they'll carry that confidence in. Well, they've got a big, strong defensive team. Well, they got and, the, and, yeah defense and some scoring, so that's a good mix to have going into the playoffs. Well, and and you know, as good as Darcy Kemper has been, uh, I don't know how he'll do in the playoffs, but he could be. I mean, he could be the X factor too. He's not a he's not a shabby goaltender. There's no doubt about it. But uh, cool. Well, it's been fun to kind of share about that. I know that we uh, are. And, really anxious about that. They just need to continue winning games. Uh, I hope they win tonight. They're currently still winning one, nothing in the third Cam Talbot has been excellent lately. Yeah. And uh, to have him stay fresh and, and play every other game along with flurry. I mean, they, they could be coming into the playoffs with the best goaltending uh, in the entire league when it's all said and done going into the playoffs. But uh, our main segment today is going to be similar to center ice card cast. They did top five underrated cards. We're going to, change it a little bit and call it five cards in our collection that we feel are underappreciated cards or sets or however you want to look at it. Um, Really excited to go through these cards. I know that last time we kind of were more in general with the cards that we were talking about uh, with our collection, but I thought it would be really fun to, you know, dive a little bit deeper into certain cards and sets and uh, see what people have to say and what their opinions are. Uh, But I would say that looking at these five in front of me, the five that you have, We've kind of previewed them to each other. They don't get nearly the exposure that some other, you know, obviously from the cup, all those cards do really well. But um, interesting enough, most of these cards in front of us don't have autographs on them. And Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's important to to show those cards love still. So uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and start off. Uh, Chris, what's the first card that you, when you were digging through your collection that you wanted to uh, show as – being underappreciated well i'm really big with photography as well and i love every aspect of the cards and um this goes back to the the 90s but oh, where am i at the uh flare showcase where i love the action shot on top of the portrait shot and then every year for the designs i know i had masked marvels had a year where they did this really well and even like in the 90s tops gold label did it really well where mm-hmm. i just love both of those pictures put together a simple design, and just look at that card. This is out so of that, that that year is what again? It's a parallel a, as well. 2014, 2015, and this is the one out of ninety nine. Ice blue, I think they call. Yeah, them. yeah. Yep. And absolutely love that card. And I know it's appreciated, but I just don't feel like it gets enough love nowadays. I feel like when people show an appreciation, they're always going for the basketball in the nineties, and mm-hmm. um, I love the fact that they they reprinted that and they gave us that tribute. And uh, when I see that card, I have it. I don't have much of my stuff out. That's one of the cards I have out at all times because I love looking at it. Awesome. And I think that's, we can agree that that's a set that we want to see come back with, you know, Flurry now playing on the wild. I mean, imagine how cool that would look Mm -hmm. um, to have him in those colors on a, on a beautiful flare design like that. Uh, Yeah. Great first choice. 
Great first choice. Uh, I'm going to start off with an autograph, my only autograph. And you talk about sets that are gone and, and also, you know, companies that are gone. And mm -hmm. I think you and I have a huge love for Panini. But uh, while this card was recently on my top 10 editions of 2022, I still think this this card and this set does not get nearly as much love. I mean, I think it costs half of what a cup patch auto would. But this is the tape to tape from 2011-12 Dominion. And of course, the amazing picture of Flurry uh, in his winter blues, winter classic, his light yeah. blues, uh, winter classic jersey. But I think I watched a, a video uh, from Panini where uh, Ryan Kessler gave them his stick and they showed them cut it up and how they put it in all the cards. And it gave me a huge appreciation for this card. And, and I actually watched that video before uh, a guy named Carter reached out on Instagram and sold this to me. I mean, I, I can't tell you how happy I am that we both own a copy of this card. Um, it's out of 20. Yeah, it's out of 20. Um, and then, again, pretty cool. The uh, picture on the back is another one of my favorites of Flurry right there as well. So, uh, yeah, Panini and their design uh, don't get enough credit. I was having a, a discussion with Art um, Boyad, I believe is how you say his last yep. name. He's got just an incredible collection. And uh, we were talking a little bit about the photography that Panini uh, uses and just like how they edit their photos and, and really bring the players to life a little bit more in their cards. Uh, so being the only Panini card I pulled out, which I could talk about them forever, I felt like that autograph set, I would take an autograph tape card any day over the autograph patch cards from the cup because the autographs are not nearly as bold and, it, you know, kind of messy looking. Whereas I mean, signing right on, on top of tape that was on a stick in a game, like you could see the tapes all black because it played a puck I mean, some pucks. I mean, that's just so cool. So uh <laughs> Yeah. Definitely underappreciated it, and they don't get talked about nearly enough, in my opinion. And like we said, we have that passion for Panini, and they were unique and innovative. So just seeing something different and then them execute it perfectly, you know, right. put that in the top five right now for underappreciated for sure. Yes, absolutely. Go for it. What do you got for number I was going to say, it's kind of funny. You said you only had one Panini, and I'm looking at mine, and I'm like, I only have one Panini in here. <laughs> um, that's so funny. We could do a whole segment on just Panini. We really right. could, but next this time. Is, this is the 1011 uh, Crown Royal Silhouette Signatures. Oh, yes. Out Love of 25. Those. There we go. And like you just made mention, the uh, photography on there and just the way they edit and execute it. Absolutely love it. Where this is a pretty simple design. There's no foil stamping or anything, but they do the die cut in the middle. And then just silhouette it over top of that patch where when I bought this specific one, I wanted the the gold and the white from the jersey because there was already enough black in the picture. Mm -hmm. and this is actually my only autograph in the five that I have as well. Okay. This is uh, blue ink and then out of 25. And again, just to see the action pose put together with the card design, I don't feel like this gets enough love in the hobby. And... I don't know if Panini has rights to this in the uh, regards to, you know, I know they do silhouette kind of stuff, but um, I don't see it enough. So I don't know if Panini has some sort of hold on that or um, if they took the claim to it and Upper Deck just doesn't want to try it for any of those reasons where they don't want to step mm. on those, but absolutely love those cards. I think they definitely have a patent on that name, obviously the name, but like yeah, the, the, the type of design. Yeah. yeah. You feel like Upper Deck could do or some kind of layering where the where the pictures in front of and I of I know patch. we've we've seen a lot of the cards before and I I have a library of just screenshots that I take of really awesome cards and there are some pretty cool accounts that do um, homage to every sports cards and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see more in hockey for sure for sure I mean. We we talk all the time about Panini coming back. Unfortunately, that that can't happen until after twenty five, uh, mm -hmm. two thousand twenty five, and by then our our dude will well maybe he'll be in like a retired set or something. He's gonna be on Legends, yeah. <laughs> man, they I hope they they put a lot in. We'll have to talk about that in a couple of years once he's retired and see how we're feeling about that. But uh, yeah, I remember when I got my copy of that card. It only has black and white for the patch, but I remember how much you talked about loving that card and 
adding that card to the collection was a, was a pretty big uh, moment for me this year because of the, you know, when you have a friend that talks about a card a whole lot, you feel like, okay, we have similar taste in, in the cards that we like. So if somebody's talking about how amazing it is, uh, I should probably look into getting it. And uh, yeah. while it's not, you know, up in like the top echelon for me, I do love the uniqueness of the design. And of course it coming from a old Pacific set name, Crown Royale. So, yeah. and I know yeah, you're, you're pretty big on the color of the ink. And I love the fact that it's not a winter classic card at all, but the blue ink just adds so much contrast to, it, and it's so sharp on that clear empty space for the auto. Absolutely. Oh. Big, bold autos are great. And Mark Andre is, is known for not signing over himself. Yeah. Meaning that if there's a picture of him in the middle, he'll kind of, move it to the side so it's not covering his, his body at all yeah he, he, he sizes his autographs to fit the card yeah and so there's a few times where i wish he would have just been nice and big and bold but it's kind of cool that he's he's unique in that way uh we like you see him like this one uh over let's see it's kind of it's the championship gear up there i know most people probably can't see it but the one that's got the circular patch and it's out of 10 and he autographed in this tiny but spot in yeah. the bottom corner. I'm like, dude. Well, that was one <laughs> I, of like, I stayed away from that card for that reason. Yeah, but it's it's got a picture of him in the cup. Yeah. Uh, from you know, I couldn't pass that one. I actually went back and looked at the price I got that for. I think it was sixty bucks, and I was like, holy moly, yeah. sixty five bucks. Like that's never gonna happen again, ever. And you know um, what? Before yeah. we move away from our autographs, I don't think we've ever, we've ever made mention of how much we should appreciate his actual auto. And what it looks like compared to a lot of other professional sports athletes. Can you hold that up there again? Just yeah, for yeah, the yeah. yeah. I mean, how about the consistency of it too, right? Yeah. Where it's just the M pretty much in an A and then the F in 29, but he's been signing that way his entire career. So we've been pretty mm -hmm. spoiled where even though you can't read his, his name clearly, there's something there more than just some couple squiggles. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm looking behind me and, and yeah, it's, it's like the spacing between the M and the F is really important to me. And I've seen a couple photos, like signed photos of his on eBay I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. But I've, I'm even though I asked, I'm like, yeah, I had him sign it at the hotel, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, the M and the F are so close. Um, I don't like it. So I haven't ended up grabbing those photos that yeah. he signed. I was Obviously, he's like heading to the bus. And he has well, yeah, time he's holding it. And you're, you can't really spread yeah. it out the sign. You have to hold a small area and then sign that small area. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, but yeah, I, he's so consistent. I love it, man. So uh, keeping with the theme of the winter classic blues, and this is a, he's wearing his 2008 or excuse me, 2009 uh, cup winning mask. Uh, so I have to, I have to show this card. This is from SP authentic. Uh, nowadays they do the spectrum and the spectrum golds, which are, you have to redeem the whole set and then you get a whole set of golds using the scratch offs or whatever. Um, this is the hollow FX gold. These were case hits. I still haven't found the year after or the year prior version. Uh, but this one is just, hopefully I get the sun to hit it. Right. This is a, oh yeah. Let's oh, see if yeah. I get the sun to hit this card. Right. It's almost too bright, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, but this, this card, when the light is hitting it just right is stunning. I, I gotta get it over. Oh yeah. I gotta get over here by my face. Don't I? So you're saying um, you want all of us to go purchase this? Uh, I do. Yes. Like I'm, I'm doing this card absolutely no justice right now, which is funny because I mean it, it's, it, it's definitely got like when I when you when you are shining it like this at this mm -hmm. angle, it's like just absolutely exploding. Um, but I can't seem to get it to do what I want it to. Anyway, so this card when. Uh, when I first saw it, I saw an account post the base card version of this, and I just love the picture of flurry and then the shine that it had I mean, you can see it behind my head right now you see no, it shining back there oh yeah <laughs> uh but uh yeah i have an amazing picture of that that i've posted on my uh, instagram what i'll probably do is i will uh take a picture of these five again in proper lighting and then post them on instagram again to kind of give some uh excitement for the episode but that card like the way that the background has the sp authentic foil that just pops on it yeah. Um, it, it reminds me of the nineties. It's a very nineties esque insert and, you know, upper deck does such a good job of having the hollow foil do the talking at times with their designs. And I just, well, I love that. You, um, 
you actually posted another card before. I thought you were going to put it in here, but ever since you posted it, I've been like kicking myself and never picking it up because seeing it in person and getting some better pictures of it, I thought you were going to pull out the uh, full force one that you just picked up. I almost did. I almost, oh. I almost did, believe it or not. <laughs> so I'm looking at it now on your page and I'm just like, oh, I love this card. And mm -hmm. you know, every part of what you just said with upper deck and their foiling and then with the photography there and his uh, yellow setup. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I uh, this is gonna be Matt's fault. I'm gonna get this card. <laughs> well, I'm only gonna show it because you brought it up, and, and what they did so well with this is they they color matched it really well. Yeah. So it's a it's a die cut out of 25, but just like the yellow jersey. Yeah. And the the color matching with the yellow die cut and the foil, like it's it's oh my gosh, it's and when this when that one popped up, I you know my heart definitely skipped a beat because yeah. that was on my top uh most most wanted uh going into this year which we're going to talk about at the end here and, and to be yeah. able to get a copy yeah I, I hope that you're able to find that man that would be amazing yeah because i'd never really seen the gold one and, and not that i could recall and i always just saw the regular one so as soon as i saw the 25 off of you i'm just like uh oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> i gotta get that <laughs> yeah yeah no that we definitely enable each other and, and get each other excited about buying cards there's no doubt about that but uh that card was uh I ended up buying this before I really decided to go all in on Flurry. I was still after the Young Guns Master Set. And, yeah. uh, you know, as I posted a few days ago, once the Young Guns Flurry came in, that's when the, the scale kind of got tipped uh, toward Flurry and it just kind of took off from there. So, um, yeah, that one's definitely up there. They, that set has a ton of great players in it. Crosby's in it. Ovechkin's in it. Yeah. Um, Trying to think of the goalies that would be in there. Carey Price, I don't think he's he's in that one yet. He might be, but uh, Pecorine is probably in there. Uh, Ryan Miller would probably be in there. Some of those, you know, late uh, 2000s, uh, all the way into 2010. Those goalies that played back then um, are definitely in those in that set too. I'm trying to think of who else would have been in there. Uh, Martin Bordeaux is probably in there. Uh, so yeah, really, really amazing set and a, and a beautiful one to look at. That brings up a whole other topic about I've been watching a lot of highlights, seeing a lot of young talent at goal. And when we look at Flurry, he's maybe one of the only remaining people that, you know, five, ten years ago was a dominant force and still in the conversation now. So yeah, he and Carrie Price. I mean, Carrie hasn't played this year, sadly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're they're one of the only ones left. I mean, you look at some of the young goalies out there right now. So Sturkin's the first one that comes up, especially the year he's having. He used to Saros. Tristan Jari. Um, yeah, Thatcher Demko just had a pretty nice save. So. Oh man, he he's 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 uh, yeah, that team's really come alive. He's he's pretty good too. Yeah, but yeah, that's a whole other topic there. So yeah, for sure. All <laughs> right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're sitting your next one. And again, I'm not much of a Vegas. I'm usually a Pens flurry, but this specific setup was the 20th anniversary for Upper Deck's MVP set. And I absolutely love the silver and superscripts. And this is the one out of 25, if I can get it somewhere there. No. But absolutely think these are underrated, underappreciated. And this was the first and only set that I've ever been able to put together of my four favorite athletes. And I actually don't post much stuff that's not hockey. Mm -hmm. But my favorite athletes growing up, this set came out in 1999 where it was Emmett Smith for football, Chipper Jones baseball, Paige Stoyakovic for the uh, for basketball, <laughs> and then Marc-Andre Fleury. And so I absolutely love this set in that regard. But I just think that, again, simple design. They've been doing it forever. Uh -huh. uh, and then whenever they put that little extra touch to it where I'm not even sure if that's his actual signature because it's it's more of the Marc-Andre. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, wondering where that is. You know, James edited on there, but I see all kinds of different ones. So I'm not sure if that was just something they did and they asked them to do. But I love the fact that they add that extra touch with the different, uh, what is it, silver, uh, gold out of 100, and then super out of 25. Right. Where, again, just – I know people appreciate it because it's been around for a while, but I definitely – like you said, we don't see it enough because everything's shadowed by the cup. You know, yeah, so I love tribute oh, sets. Sure. <laughs> I love the tribute sets, and I love that throwback right there. 
I, I, I've i always enjoyed chasing down the superscripts every year. I mean, even adding the one this year, uh, while, that, while it's very different uh, looking, again, just like the one I showed and the one that you just showed, it kind of harkens back to the 90s, man, where those superscripts were coming from a really cheap product. And who knows how many of them still exist yeah. because kids open them. Uh, yeah. I know I did when I was growing up. So, like, to track them down, man, is uh, is tough. Even nowadays, I mean, I've seen one superscript end on eBay. I bought mine from a guy on EPAC. And I think four or five people on EPAC own them. That's, you know, seven copies that I've seen out of 25. So, yeah, you know, they're not um, – they're very, very tough cards to find. Not easy at all. And uh, and I like that, that it's still that way now. You know, um, in the Tyler Glass now collection, a card out of 25 is, is not going to be tough to find for me. Usually it's not. Yeah. Um, usually like an orange refractor or something like that. So they pop up fairly regularly. Uh, but, you know, in hockey, they just don't. And uh, I like that. I like that they're tough. And every time I see that card, the base card show up, I, I hope that it's the superscript. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, there's there's always going to be a, a deep love for those low serial numbered cards from MVP and OPG and stuff like that. So maybe we appreciate it because it is tougher to find, but maybe it's tougher to find because nobody's posting them because they just want to keep them. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, are we kind of contradicting ourselves here? Yeah. Talking it up and then realizing why it's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. yeah, it's interesting. I'm not I'm not sure, but it, you know, it'd be great if, uh, well, in a way, if we knew where most of these cards were at, because we don't see them anymore. Oh, know? yeah. But Specifically, 19, 1999 stuff. Um, it oh, was way man. overprinted for MVP. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard. I, I opened so much of football MVP back in 1999, and I never got close to even a gold label. So that just shows you. And like you said, kids buy that stuff. So yep. we, we have, uh, you know, your, uh, who's 1999 draft class for NFL would have been like edge James and stuff like that, where those are sitting mm -hmm. somewhere who knows how many have been tracked and, you know, basketball for, uh, what Panini does the logo man tracker. So mm -hmm. that up. where I think that is a nice, a nice touch, but that's like the highest scale card that fans want to see like, right. part a uh, uh, MVP superscript tracker, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe would be we, could, funny to see. Maybe we could start a tracker for a lot of these um, popular cards. Yeah. I, I mean, in general, I am very curious where some of these are, but you know, in, in my recent deal with, uh, with Brandon, which again, uh, sorry, that didn't work out better than, than it did uh, yeah. for both of us, but to see, a father and a son who have been who are, were were as you saw sitting on all those flurry in just a small town in Canada. I mean, there's got to be a ton of those collections out there where a lot of these cards we're talking about are sitting in of different players. So, yeah. you know, it just goes to show you have to get them on social media and and get them out there and contact yeah. with people who are are you know passionate collectors and and then you have to hope they're going to move anything. Something in for a price, like, as we mentioned before, I think Flurry's move to Minnesota is going to stir the pot a little bit. People are going to move a little bit, and I've seen that. You know, him getting out of Chicago, um, which drops his prices some. Where I think his Young Guns is now under four hundred again. Where I'm seeing it going for like three ninety five, mm -hmm. but that could change. You know, he could win ten straight games, and they go to the playoffs, and they get hot. He's back to the starter, and he's taken over, and it, it could go back up to five hundred. Yep. Um, his his value in the hobby is is yeah. It, yeah it's it's not consistent across the board as penguin stuff actually ends up being pretty cheap depending on the card sometimes than it should be and this vegas stuff still goes really strong uh but who knows how this is going to affect his prices i mean i'm, I'm bummed that we're going to have to call um, well at least i might i don't know if you will but there's certain cards that are going to be like chicago patch autos and i'm like I do not want to compete with all those Blackhawks fans because, you know, their patches are sick. Well, you know? yeah, and on top of he got his 500th win there. So there are going to be some pretty yeah pretty serious collectors going for that stuff just because of that. Yeah, he'll have he'll definitely uh, – whichever cup release uh, has him in, in the Chicago uniform will we'll have a tribute 500 win type deal. Might actually be SP Authentic. They do – you know, the moments, you know, where they, the SPs yeah. are autographed and yeah. stuff like that. There'll probably be something like that for sure. 
All right, let's uh, let's move on. I'm going to go to number three here. This is yeah, from a McDonald's set, and I remember seeing a copy of this on ComC, uh, and I have the and you know the McDonald's base cards look amazing. Uh, the older ones. This is from 2008 nine, but uh, this he's still in his yellow pads, which you know we love. But the sparkle on this thing again, my camera probably won't do just well. Maybe a little bit. So here is the gold parallel from McDonald's this year, and it's serial numbered out of a hundred. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely getting this one on the camera for sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it is a stunning card, and the like the gold foil and the sparkles that are going on in the yeah. background. Uh, in the yellow pads, it's it's easily you know it's easily a top ten non autographed card in my collection, but I think the the lack of exposure that they get, um, like for instance, when I posted that card, I included I don't know if actually I included a uh, live photo type thing. I know I did in, in with my buddies on Facebook, but yeah, when you see that card in the light it just captures your attention. And I had a, a few people reach out and go, what the heck is this card? Yeah, I've never heard of this before. And right. yet, you know, it's got all the great players in it. So it really goes to show a, that, you know, because it was a McDonald's release, you're not going to see many players available on a consistent basis. And um, also not a lot of people follow the McDonald's cards that much because they think of the base cards. They didn't know that they did a parallel that year. I wish they would have kept doing it to be honest yeah. with you, uh, because Flurry's got some really cool McDonald's cards uh, just with the pictures that they used of them. Oh, yeah. I appreciate the designs. Are they mm -hmm. Do they print a lot of those, or is I mean, it they, underprinted? They would have to if there's a whole... I mean, I think there's 100 players. If there's 100 of these yeah. gold parallels for every player, yeah. just think about how much they made. I mean, they're getting them to all the McDonald's in Canada. This is probably a Canada-only yes, release. Yeah. I don't remember in the States at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very, excuse me, very cool uh, to see, you know, a rare parallel that came from McDonald's of all places. And, uh, yeah. yeah, very happy that the guy decided to move it when he did. I have not seen another one since then. Obviously, I would love to see one in your collection because it's such a unique looking card. But, yeah, go take a look. If you're if, if you're watching now or you're just listening in the background, the 2008-9 uh, McDonald's gold parallel out of a hundred uh any just having one of any player that you kind of like would be great just so you can see how they look on uh or in the natural light they're yeah. they're yeah they're pretty crazy in well, yeah like you said simple design but effective you got the uh the sparkle going on What's that yeah it is it is it is different you know and you don't see that that kind of foil pattern anymore in their cards believe it mm -hmm. or not it's kind of strange to be honest with you you would think you would you would see a little bit more of this kind of pattern going on but yeah it's it kind of yeah with its uniqueness uh stands out for me so well, yeah, like that, said, with a card like that you do it justice with the live photo so yeah. i know we have a ton of foiling in the sports cards industry now but especially in gaming that's the foiling process they use for each card game sets them apart so mm. we're always finding ourselves kind of just trying to find the shimmer <laughs> to do it justice, you know? Right, right. I mean, you guys in the gaming card community, I mean, you have some amazing art to look at. I know, is it Zomdos Collectibles? He's he's a guy that I've talked to a few times. He's a big Dragon Ball Z uh, card collector. Mm -hmm. Pokemon a little bit on the side. Uh, but he... Uh, he posts these amazing pictures of these cards. And I'm like, dude though like the shine and the color on those is just like yeah. i wish we could see that level of shine and color in hockey cards and he yeah. goes well you're talking about an animated character so you can you know have some liberties uh creatively to, to add more like, yeah. at, like jumping off the card foil as opposed to you don't want to take too much away from the player on the on the card but mm -hmm. i think that upper deck mcdonald's parallel there kind of has that balance of both uh you know so i yeah Good comparison for sure. I mean, geez, that I'll have to have you on with him sometimes when we or someday that we talk about the similarities between the two because there's also some big differences. But I think that there that there's kind of the gaps being bridged a bit with how much foil they're putting on cards now. Yeah, well, even like why we're doing this, it, just the appreciation for that card alone that you're showing is getting people into it. 
with the mm. gaming cards, it's the same thing with the artwork and the foiling where my brother doesn't play at all. But when he sees it, he goes, I want to play. You know, I just want to buy this stuff, right. you know. And yeah. that's what a lot of people end up doing. They're just like, that looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Like I've said before, it just ties so much lore and hobby interest together where it, right. you know, if you're into it, it's just like, it's something else to compete with spending money on for hockey cards. So it's just like, oh, man. <laughs> I know you gotta you gotta find find money for both in your yeah. uh, in your collecting world, but uh, cool. We're down to our last four. What do you got next for us? Yeah, my uh, fourth one's gonna be the 2009. Oh, we're over here. There we go. 2009, 2010 SBX Shadow Buck Stoppers. And again, I'm pretty big on unique cards that you don't see too often. Um, I know that. Upper Deck has a couple different variations of these, like Brilliance and the Cup. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love the multiple layers of the card. It's all acetate. And then I love when they can effectively put multiple pictures on. So they got his uh, cup set up there where they have the home and away jersey. So I just love how it's a simple, basic design, but complex concept of the card. Um, and again, this is one of those... I don't know what it's number to. I'd love to hear um, or find that out, but I knew exactly where I was when I got it and it'll never leave the collection. So like whenever I make my artwork or anything canvas wise, it's on there. It's one of my favorite cards and definitely um, I just don't see it enough around the hobby pages that I follow. Um, but yeah, number, number two on my underappreciated, you know, when I look at this card too, I was, I was curious what you were going to say. The first thing that stands out to me is definitely that he's got the finals logo on it and mm -hmm. having the home and away, you see a bit of a playoff beard, but the, the background is quite interesting too. Like I have some sunlight hitting it right now. It's almost like, I know it's flat and it, yeah, but it's almost like it's got a fake texture to it in the background. So the yeah. layering on the card is just spectacular and it's got the rounded corners as well yeah um if you actually look at the side view of this thing i don't know if you have it in a perfect fit or not as well but yeah there is one two three four layers to this card so you've mm -hmm. got the the top acetate layer which is the white jersey you've got the the middle black it's black on the side or the white underneath that that's just the border i believe the black in the middle, that sandwich, that's him. And where it says SPX shadow box. And then the, the back layer is the, you know, the back of the card Yeah. Um, to make it a little bit thicker and give it the shadow box. But uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, when I started buying cards from that Steve Smiv or however you want to say it on eBay, um, maybe I shouldn't say who he is, but it's too late now. Um, that was the first card I bought from him. So yeah. I was, uh, <clears throat> as soon as I had the funds to go after cards, I went after it. So as a flurry collector like yourself, man, the uniqueness of that and knowing it's a case hit, I've only seen that one in yours and Kendall's. I have never seen another. So, mm -hmm. you know, go figure. Uh, I would love to see them do that set again. I think SPX and uh, Black Diamond have kind of taken a, a bit of a dive, honestly, as far as collectability and, and the ability to do stuff like that anymore. But yeah, when you put the product out for so many years, it's hard to be different. So I think they obviously home run with that one. And uh, mm -hmm. I would just like to see, you know, more of that kind of stuff, but you don't want to overdo it. So that's why I right. appreciate that card. Those, the, you know, Cup always has really cool ideas with shadow boxes, but when he has his like legends cards, I hope that they, because Upper Deck's got plenty of Cup photos that they've purchased the licensing rights to. And I don't know if those last for like, they can you reuse that photo whenever. But I hope that they a put him in a lot of penguin stuff, and also use his his you know Stanley Cup photos from 08 and or 09, uh, 09 for sure. Uh, so hopefully we see something like that again in the future. That would be yeah. that would be deck, awesome, man. Upper deck doesn't reuse photos. I'm not talking about his young guns and his black diamond rookie card. No, <laughs> I know those photos are very similar. But I mean that was back in 03, 04. You know nowadays they. Um, I don't know if they have a deal with Getty Images or whatever, or how that works, but uh, or if they have their own photographers, maybe they do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, they they don't tend to do it too much. I know uh, last year they did it. Um, so his his artifacts photo, there's those uh, 
um, horizontal cards that have the dual jerseys or patches and their autographs, you know, they're green in the background. Yeah. I'm not very keen on that design, but the picture of him, I was like, I really like that picture. And then I got his, uh, what is it? Endorsements autograph out of 25 from last year, same exact picture. So maybe it was just such a good picture. They decided to use it again. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, Somebody ran my, out of time somewhere and couldn't find another yeah. one. Yeah. Well, and he only has 25. A lot of guys have 99 cards in that set. So it's kind of strange how that happened, but, uh, my next card for you is from, I'm going to take the top of this thing off. So hopefully that does a little bit of justice. This is from, uh, so I think it was three years ago. Yeah. 1819. So upper deck did an Opeachy. Uh, it was like a tire company set coast to coast. That's it. And they had a couple parallels on, they had a red parallel, which was, I think one out of six packs or something, but then they had this, uh, uh, Northern Lights parallel, which is out of 99. And I remember getting a Sebastian Ajo. And then I was like, I got to get Mark Andre Fleury. And when I was my dad, I remember showing this to my dad and he goes, now that is a hockey card right there, son. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's, this is what this one looks like here. Um, and I won't be able to do it a ton, but you can see how the foil, it kind of changes like the nor Northern Lights in the background. Nice. Yeah. Um, even though he's on Vegas, I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is just too spectacular to, to pass up. So uh, that had been in the display case for quite a while. Uh, and it, it's since been replaced because I like to kind of keep it rotating and it'll probably come back. But I'm a big fan of, you know, trying new foil patterns out and to have like a Northern Lights thing as a guy that lives in Alaska, I think has a little bit of special meaning to it as yeah. well. So was that... Uh, was that numbered anything? Yeah, it's numbered to 99. Okay. So it's numbered on the side here to 99. Okay. And a lot of guys that I have seen selling uh, this set in general do like a one of those posts where there's multiple people in the set. So I know there was a flurry a few months ago before we met, but that was the last one I saw. So uh, definitely yeah. want to keep your – and they have – most good players are in that set. Most guys that are playing now that are good have a card in that set. It was a pretty big – base set and everybody had a parallel like that made uh to the to the base set so yeah um i, I yeah, love the picture on there because it's kind of spin off of the fanimation where we show our appreciation for that card as well mm, where yes. they put a filter on the actual live photo yeah so it has that fanimation feel to it that's true yeah it does a nice nice pickup on that i guess I, I mean i i noticed it but not nearly as much as you uh as as they did but you're right they did they kind of over uh what are we gonna say the contrast or something they they overdid it a bit yeah so then so then they add the foil to it so it's just kind of like hey let's add foil to a fanimation card so let's see what that looks like <laughs> that that would be awesome and uh, i don't know if they'll do it I, i'm holding out hope but uh you talk about fanimation you've seen the fanimation cards this year they're pretty much live photos that are kind of cartoony but not that great but I have to say, if they're using a lot of winter classic photos in there, that flurry would have to be in series two uh, with the eye paint during practice or during when the sunlight was actually out and he was playing. Oh, my gosh, man, that that setup that he had for that winter classic or the outdoor classic last year with the red mask. Um, that's going to be awesome to see. I hope they do a fanimation of him this year in series two. That would make me really happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like you. We talked about. It. I didn't like that design typically, but if they throw a flurry winter classic in there, that'd be pretty sweet. Well, because he's. I mean, even if they did, there's a really cool picture of him because a lot of them they've had their like helmets off with their beanies and they're like warming up. I'm really hoping there's a photo of him where his arms are back on the top of the cage, and mm -hmm. he's got his mask on, but he's smiling and he's got the eye black. I'm like, oh my gosh, that on a card yeah. would be like up there in one of my all-time favorites. So uh, I'm, I'm really, you know, holding out hope that they uh, do that again. Uh, they get him in Fanimation for the second time. I mean, Kale McCarr is in there this year. They've got Pasternak and all these different guys. I'm like, okay, they, they, and they've got Mark Stone. Uh, so I'm hoping that we, we get that and we are both able to grab one of those in the future. So yeah. Um, cool. We're down to our last card each. Uh, which one did you save to the end? Uh, this is also one that I keep out at all times. I have a few copies of it, but this is the Black Diamond Run for the Cup. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I'm going to be right. I'm going to try and get that at a good light where I'm not in the picture. <laughs> yep. So that is the 0809, which is the year that they they did run make a run for the cup and ended up ultimately winning. Where this card, I just love the die cut. I love the acetate. Uh, it's numbered, so it's not like it's hard to find, but it is. There is a limited quantity out there. And when you just think about sports, any sport, everybody always talks about when their kids playing and practicing and what they're going to do and when they dream of winning. And this cup was, or this card was just all of that. Where it was his first cup. It's his, uh, I guess, only time on the ice, so it makes it that much more special. But mm -hmm. it just everything culminated to put that card together to be a centerpiece in my little display that I have, mm -hmm. my humble display, um, mm -hmm. where I absolutely love it. It's got the picture of the cup on the card. Again, portrait and an action shot. Um, so everything about the card, I had to pick up multiple copies of it. So nice. it's like, sorry, I know there's 99 out there. If somebody <laughs> wants one, I was like, I'll let one go, but I'm gonna, definitely going to keep at least two. All right. <laughs> That's great, Chris, that uh, you, you kind of found a card that's not too expensive and, and got multiple copies of. I found myself, if it's for the right price, wanting to, to do the same, you know, on a cup like that McDonald's. If another one of those McDonald's came up and, and you didn't already have one, mm -hmm. uh, then I would, yeah, definitely want to add another. There's a few of them that are like that out there for sure. Uh, but yeah, that card, like using an acetate, that's kind of subtle, uh, but also having a picture of that first year that he went to the cup, I call it the brick mast. Yeah. Um, taking the Red Wings to game seven. I mean, he he wasn't the best player on the ice, but he was pretty darn good that year too. So uh, I have some some good memories and, and I think we both are like that. We like looking at cards and, and seeing, you know, what that, that was going on in that photo, like what that means to us, yeah. what that reminds us of. And, uh, and that one definitely carries a lot of sentimental value to it. So, uh, and that's, do you know how big that set is? How many people are in that set? Was it just the Red Wings and Penguins? No. Or did um, they get like Gretzky and all these other great players in it? I'm curious about that. Yeah, I can look. Um, that's definitely, of all the years, of all the designs I've seen, the 0809, he wasn't in too many. Uh, actually, his rookie year is in Quest for the Cup, which wasn't even Black Diamond. Um, but that's the best by far design. I do want to update everybody. Uh, this is pretty exciting. So the Wild were down two to one, just like they were last night. Ryan Hartman scored his 27th goal uh, with about uh, six minutes, a little under six minutes to go to tie it. And then in overtime, somehow they were on the power play um, already to start the, uh, well, I'm trying to remember in hockey. It is is how, is what the time says on the goal how far into the period they are correct yep. Yep. so 15 seconds in kevin fiala scored the game winner and they won again three two in overtime so the wild have won like seven eight games in a row or something like that uh, yeah that would be eight i believe yeah yeah so uh pretty exciting just wanted to say that and and i know that makes you happy because we're going into playing philadelphia and flurry's going to hopefully play next game and uh yeah were, were you able to pull up that set on your phone real quick yeah, there's 42 players in it. It looks like it's just the stars from the league. So okay. it wasn't a, it wasn't like championship rings where they okay. just gave the the cup winning team the the nod. Okay. It, it was everybody from the pretty sure, yeah, cuz yeah, Joe Thornton's on there, St. Louis on okay. there, Longo's on there. Okay, so just awesome. stars and guys that are trying to win a cup, and then Flurry yeah. just happened to be playing in in the playoffs yeah. here. Okay, perfect. So there was it was a 42 card set. Great. Uh, well, my last one is is not only underappreciated, but um, very few people know about this card. And when you, I remember seeing this on ComC and thinking like, "Oh, it's cool. He's in his All Star setup from, uh, I believe this is 2019 or 2019. Oh yeah, the All Star game in San Jose, uh, where he brought out the gold pads and uh, he had the black jersey on, underneath, and uh, so." <laughs> It's a gold parallel, not just the gold border, but the gold foil parallel. And you have to combine like 30 bronze parallels to make one of these. And, and I've only seen, I think there's there's two in existence that I've seen. I'm sure there's more, but not many out there. And the subtle foil when the sunlight hits it is just spectacular. When this thing came out of the uh, my ComC order when it came in this summer, it just, it, it was just like, it just jumped off. Uh, 
off the card, the gold foil. So you see how kind of subtle it is. You can see very uh, closely there. There's some like texture to it. But if I come back here and I am able to get, I don't know if I can get the, the sunlight to hit it right. Probably not because that would be unfair. Uh, this card, I'll, send, I'll have to send you a picture of this. This card is um, is, is just glorious uh, with the gold foil and like the etching that's on the foil of the background. Yeah, um, it's it's amazing. So I, I definitely wanted to throw that on there. I had actually somebody reach out um, who goes, uh, hey, you know that flurry that you posted a picture of? Uh, I want to uh, find one for my player. Can you tell me more about it? Oh, yeah. And by the way, that's from uh, 1819 Parkhurst. I wanted to make sure. Or, yeah, 1819? No, 1920 Parkhurst. So, yeah, had to make sure to throw it in there. It's another one of those subtle releases. It gets on EPAC, and you have all these achievement cards to try to obtain. And, and just like that flurry mosaic I posted a couple weeks ago, they're they're not well-known. And people see them and they go, wow, how, how how hard was it to pull that from a pack? It's like, well, you couldn't pull them from the pack. Yeah. So uh, the EPAC exclusive cards, if you do your due diligence and, and look up just how to make them. And also, you know, Logan, who's been on here, he'd be more than happy to explain because uh, he's had to help me a few times. I'm like, Logan, what is this thing, dude? And why does it look so awesome? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to throw that one in there, man. That one's. I love the picture. That was one of his, I think that's the first card that he ever had his gold pads on uh, that he eventually started wearing uh, all of last year and a little bit of the year before going into the COVID uh, season. So uh, it has a little bit of special meaning to me. And and I know that you love that setup too. Those That gold pad look with the dark colored grayish jerseys. I mean, oh. it's beautiful. And I was going to say, just between the colors of his photo and then even the uh, colors and the elements of the card play really well together. So right, that's just one of those ones where you see it and then especially like how you're holding it and you're looking at it in person where you want to share that with people and tell them, hey, uh, heads up, this is a beautiful card. Get it. Find it when you can, you know, because it is worth it. I'm going I actually just sent it to you. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to. Uh, Pull this up and, and screen yeah. share it for everybody. Doesn't that look great? Yeah, you um, did you do an opening video with that on your YouTube or was that? I awesome? did. Okay. Yeah, I did actually. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I remember seeing it. Yeah, I I, I just felt like uh, it needed to have some extra love because just just to how beautiful it is uh, in person. Um, see if I can. Yeah, it's not going to let me zoom in much more, but I'm going to share my screen just for you that are watching on video. Uh, I feel like I, I need to do this a little bit of justice here. Um, there is the photo. Is that showing up there? Yep, it's there. So, and that's just with, you know, some subtle sunlight coming down on it, but you can see like the etching, it's, it's harder to see, but the net is kind of etched in. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable in person. So yeah, it's called a... Gold foil EPAC exclusive from uh, 1920 Parkers. I definitely recommend everybody go out and try to find their player. Everybody's got one out there. Uh, some have two. Um, I have been lucky to track them all down of Flurry. I believe he has that one uh, three. Uh, so yeah, they're they're beautiful cards. There's one that I haven't posted, but uh, it's. It, it, I mean, the print run can't be that high. I mean, it, it could be if they everybody redeemed them, but. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen, especially that one, I haven't seen hardly any. So <clears throat> I'd say that we did justice to these sets. I mean, I look at the five in front of me. I know you're looking at yours, and I, and I feel like uh, after somebody's watched this or listened to it at the very least, that they will have gone and looked up their player for all these sets. So uh, you had a couple honorable mentions, right? What was one of them? You had two of them, but what was one that, I mean, we all know about them, but they definitely don't command the price that we might think they should, they should because just how beautiful and simple yeah. they are. Let me grab the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cause these kind of go together and this is again, I keep this out because this is one of my favorite memories of all time where they're kind of one, a one B here. Yeah. But I love the, Panini nod to the banners that hang up in the arenas where I'd love to see this more often where this is the 09 die cut foiled kind of etched mm -hmm. um, 09 banner. And then this is the same play from uh black diamond, which this is a custom um, 
wasn't a patch or anything. This was manufactured. manufactured patch, right? Yeah, it was manufactured from 2016, 2017 Black Diamond, where this card out of 25 was one of the toughest ones I had picking up. And then I just saw it recently, and I know it's underappreciated because how hard it was for me to get in the price I paid back then versus now. Oh, yeah. I was just like, wow, people do not know what this card is. Like, they, it is a sticker auto. Which is a downside, but it for a manufactured patch, uh, 0809 Cup Champions, one of my favorite memories of all time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love having this stuff on card. So right. these, uh, these two, this banner especially, I'd love to see uh, if they made them. They probably did make them, and I just haven't found them for the 16, 17. I'd love to see those cup banners come out because mm -hmm. I love the uh, Vegas or the yeah that original pens, black and gold there, but I love the retro throwbacks that they had for 16 17 right um but yeah. you know, upper deck does a good job with those day of day with the cup cards i was actually just talking to somebody about that and uh i was thinking man when they do like a you know like bro doer had a day with the cup card that was in series one this year mm -hmm. and i was licking my chops like oh man when when flurry is retired they should do a card of him uh from 09 when they won the cup you know with the glasses yeah. in the car and um, or, you know, just hanging out with it afterwards after the parade, uh, because he doesn't have one from the first cup. He only has two from the two cups that he won Yeah. Uh, when Murray was a starter. So, you know, it would be nice to have him where he was playing that almost the entire playoffs for them. Yeah. So, I am. Um, I did that first Stanley cup parade and him and Crosby were in the, uh, last vehicle together with their, maybe it was the last year. Malkin might've been with the con Smythe, but. Just a picture of him, them hanging out, hats on, just not playing hockey, but just hanging out. It was like that yeah. would be a perfect card right there. And it I know was. they do, I know they did parade cards on some of the uh, smaller time sets, but it was like, let's put that on a day with the cup. Let's have you know right. Flurry in a parade from 09 with that cup. Mm -hmm. That would be see, pretty sweet. I'd like to see that one because it's like some of them are such oddball pictures where you appreciate the uh, candidness of them. <laughs> right. Uh, you got to seep out in the Jeep, you know that that's cool. You know? <laughs> Hanging out with well, that, that card's pretty yeah. hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But I'd yeah. like to see the parade with it. That'd be pretty cool. Yep, for sure. Yeah, I just love the the idea of doing stuff like that because uh, hockey's very unique in in terms of what they can offer with the memories of cards and whatnot. I mean, you're not just looking at basketball, just pumping out product after product. That yeah. just to get stuff out there. I think uh, you know having the uniqueness that hockey offers with some of the cards uh has still continued you know the unannounced cards for instance you know yeah. the two that you were able to pick up you and i from opc i mean like that kind of stuff is is always really special so uh and it's funny too yeah. with, with hockey and, and my number one there the run for the cup where we all know that's the the best title to win and when i was sitting there thinking like what do the other sports cards or renditions of those look like and it's like nobody has the cup Mm -mm. You know, run for the Lombardi, you know, nobody has a run for the uh, World Series, you know, yeah. nothing like this. So it's, again, just one more unique factor with hockey that I know everybody loves their sports cards from the other uh, big major sports, but hockey mm -hmm. by far has the best, best market, best, uh, yeah. best opportunity to make cards that are above and beyond, in my opinion. That's why it's hurt so much, you know, there for a bit when we weren't getting any product out, but uh yeah. I'm pretty stoked for Premier. I mean, there, he Flurry doesn't. He has a few in there, but most of it's going to be really expensive because it's you know autographs and patch autos and things like that. But uh, I am excited to see him in like a higher end product for the first time since I decided to collect Flurry. You know, they they skipped over him for a few sets, which I've mentioned probably enough at this point. I don't heard. think that's going to happen anytime soon because it was great. Listen to Centerize Cardcast. They talked about or Billy Cilio talked about those game Jersey cards and just how he wanted to make sure they wanted to make sure the best players were in that set. And I was like, Oh, okay. Mark Andre Fleury's in there. I think you yeah. guys finally realized that he should be in more stuff. So yeah. um, I, I feel, I mean, he's look at what he's been in with OPG and with MVP and now with uh, series one, they put him in a lot. They have put him in a lot. And uh, I think that, that says a lot that they've, kind of recognized okay well he won a Vesna so maybe we ought to yeah start showing him some love so it makes me excited to see premiere and then uh, obviously stature is is I'm, I'm holding out hope that we still get that set 
you know, SP authentic, obviously I feel like because it's been delayed so much, hopefully they do some kind of a cool, like, I cannot believe they have not come out with a card of him making the diving save an autograph. Like yeah. I, that would be the most expensive card of flurry in a Vegas uniform. If it was short printed or yeah. SSP, like Appreciated card, yeah. Oh my gosh, man. That would be um, nuts. But yeah, one funny thing though, and we keep, we always talk about him getting exposure when he went to Vegas and getting more popular and getting another fan base and the same thing for when he was in Chicago and now Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But we joked about, Flurry was in Vegas for five seasons mm -hmm. in the biggest show town, you know, in the world probably. And no one's ever thrown him a bouquet of flowers before. <laughs> so right. it's his first in Minnesota of all places, nicknamed flower. Uh, you know, how many, how many, you know, women and girls love him and no one's ever thrown him flowers before <laughs> until last night. <laughs> his press conference is great too, because he, uh, they go, Hey, 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 Mark Andre, have you ever had in your in your you know entire career someone throw you a bouquet of flowers? And I mean, first of all, I love seeing how happy he is right now. Like yeah. that brings me a lot of joy, uh, knowing that he's happy and competing. And he goes, uh, "I don't want to offend anyone, but I don't think so." Yeah, right. <laughs> and then uh, Leia Hextall uh, was doing a post game interview. She goes. I'm sure you're bringing these to your wife, but if not, feel free to throw them my way. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. Uh, it, but it just kind of shows, goes to show just how, how liked he is uh, by everybody. And, uh, you know, one can only hope that uh, going into the future up until the, the day he retires, kind of like they did with Pecorine. I mean, Pecco was in almost every set the last couple of years there uh, that yeah. Flurry continues to see more cards being produced and, uh, that would be great. But I thought we'd end the last few minutes here. Uh, you know, we're both teachers, as we've mentioned before, and, and our careers, we, in order to succeed, we need to, you know, create lesson plans, create goals that we want to achieve, you know, those standards that we're trying to achieve by the end of the year. I think as collectors, we've taken that approach too. I know it's really helped me feel like I'm accomplishing something while I'm collecting Flurry. Obviously, getting new cards is always great but there needs to be a why behind it sometimes. And uh, at the beginning of the year, you and I both made that we kind of talked about a little bit uh, last time you were on, we both made like a visual wanted list, like a top, however many, do you remember how many you had on yours, by the way? Oh, I'd have to look. I know there's probably about 30 there. Of okay. Cards notably that I want or would like to get or find. Okay. And as we know, like this hobby, like part of it is like the thrill of the hunt right? Yeah. You know, like tracking stuff down that we don't have, but you know, I, I, I did the same motivated by you. I, I made an original top 36 and I was revisiting that. And I, you know, wanted to go to you first. I mean, looking at that 30 that you came up with, I know that I've been a, a little bit more active just because, um, you know, you have a lot of the stuff that I've been able to pick up or maybe you didn't want it as much, but how are you, how are you feeling going into, you know, we're, we're past like the first, third of, of, a, of 2022. I mean, how, how has it been going for you so far as far as like crossing some of those off your list? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, haven't been able to cross any of the big ones off of there. Um, I don't think anything off my visual want list. I've just been uh, picking up some of the smaller stuff, but promisingly uh, I have been able to find some online that now I'm just trying to get for a realistic price. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm, I'm playing more of the patient game. Uh, just seeing how things end up. Uh, it was promising seeing his young guns dip under 400. Mm -hmm. uh, I know between that father and son duo, they had some stuff on there in their collection that I was really, you know, hoping to get a chance at. And even just hearing the price on the premiere out of 99, um, just trying to find more of a realistic price for that card. Right. Where I, it's out of 99. I've seen it a few times. I'm not going to be in a hurry to pick something up. Right. I don't feel like the price is right for it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I did make a, um, actually, you know what? I did pick up one card. I just recently got it. One of the uh, high gloss um, upper deck high gloss out of 10. So I was able to add one more for the pens collection of that. So, Would that happen to be the one where he's down and butterfly with the yellow pads? No. Um, <laughs> Let me look what year that one just went off my uh, watch list. And I was like, oh, man, I should have pulled the trigger on that one. But well, actually, you know, let me check because I made an offer on one of them. 
It has cause, I mean, if it is, it's the one that just came off. That's great that you end up getting it from 08 oh, yeah, yeah. He was dropping down into his butterfly. Yeah. Okay. So, you, well, it was you. See, and that that's great though, because we talked about this too. Isn't it cool to know that like a lot of times when an amazing card gets post like purchased or whatever off eBay, you're like, I bet I'm gonna see that on Instagram. Like, oh wait, yeah. it's one of my buddies. You know, like yeah. that's that's cool. And the fact that it's numbered, it's easy to track. But um, like we've talked about before, you're just trying to find it at a realistic price, and uh, mm -hmm. the seller was very fair with it. I gave him an honest offer of what it's what a good price on those are good uh, and he accepted it right away it wasn't very long i, would, I didn't wait very long at all mm -hmm. so i'm waiting good. for that to come in cool but yeah, that's, yeah. That's awesome dude i mean those high gloss are uh yeah they're tough they're tough to track down i mean i know you mentioned like oh yeah it'll pop up eventually but i mean i look at you me and kendall mm -hmm. um we all have certain high glosses so you take those out that means there's only seven left and then you think about Pittsburgh Penguins collectors. Yeah. And you think about set collectors. And the odds of you seeing another high gloss are pretty much gone. So, yeah, yeah high glosses are definitely uh, – I overpaid, If I guess, if you want to say that, on the one that I got this year. But if you're looking at two to three exclusives out of 100 in an entire case of Upper Deck this year, I mean, that's significantly less than before. Um that just goes to show that a high gloss, while they're still out of 10, that means they they could be shoved away into cases that never get bought. You know, if uh, Cole Caulfield and and uh, Trevor Zegras' young guns go completely ballistic at some point, or Spencer Knight or Jeremy Swayman, these cases could sit sealed forever because yeah. the overall prices are up. So, you know, well, yeah. And even so, – uh, who was that? Was that Logan that found the Ovechkin parallel and just base com like common? Oh yeah, that silver. Yeah. Where you know you think about Upper Deck, it's a pretty commonly open, widely open product by kids. Where you don't realize you have a card out of ten, you might just shuffle through, not a player you don't you you like, so you throw it into a box and mm -hmm. you know again, same thing with the MVP, the uh, superscript, gold script. Sometimes you just don't notice the. Um, right that subtle difference sometimes where it's high gloss, but if you're not looking for it or you don't know it's there, um, it is tougher, but I still feel like out of 10, I'm pretty confident. Sometimes I can, I can find them. Um, I didn't find that. I, I did have all his Vegas stuff for a while, all the high gloss. Cause I wanted to collect wow. the entire set, but his one where he's coming onto the ice um, and it was the horizontal card where he's looking down at the camera, walking out of the walkway onto the ice. Oh yeah. Um, I couldn't find that card for the longest time. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this doesn't exist. So I'm just going to sell my Vegas. I sold the three or four copies that I had. There might have been three copies. That I, I, had. I wish you still had the one where he's looking up because that's one of my favorite shots of him on a card from Vegas because it's the good side of the mask. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I love the exclusives to so much. I'm like, that is that is one of my my bigger wants for sure. Yeah. And I, I sell the card. I sell the cards and – um even right now, I have the very card I could never find. I have it in my watch list. I'm just like, why? <laughs> and I'm not even trying to go back on that one because I'm going to stay true to the uh, find the pen stuff and stick to it. And that'll yeah. help me uh, stay humble with the collection. Good. Good. Well, yeah, those high gloss, I never, I guess I never realistically want to get them all. But in my mind, the, the one where he's, his arms are above his head, that will be my favorite yeah. one of all time because that was taken two seconds after he made that save right yeah. there yeah. so i think uh it's fun to grab them when the chance comes and uh you know if i'm able to, to get more of them down the road great if not uh I, there's plenty of other ones to chase down yeah. but uh yeah it's it's been interesting you know when you when you set out and you say okay these 36 cards are my most wanted and uh and i recently i kind of rehashed that but i've been able to cross off a way more than i than i ever anticipated i mean you look at that video i did on my youtube channel yesterday that you mentioned earlier and uh yeah, the top 10. i mean I'm, lo I'm looking at that thing going i mean that's my like, like a holy grail card crossed off you know you got the fan i mean just right there you can see some of them like the fact that some of those are crossed off is just like you know it feels super fortunate but it's always a good plug to say that the community aspect of this whole hobby, it, it enables us to, you know, kind of live out our dreams as collectors. And, but we also like seeing others, you know, have that same similar feeling. 
to like, man, I, I can't believe that I was able to find this card. And then it comes in the mail and then you post a picture and, you know, you and your buddies are all chatting about it. And um, sharing that with other people is just as exciting. So I think, uh, you know, you look at just how important the community is and there's still some people that are, you know, in on that and some people who care more about just talking about how amazing their cards are. And, and I think it's important not to lose the importance of, uh, you know, connections with people because that's what makes it all possible at the end of the day. You know, half these cards wouldn't be in here without, you know, great friends and, and people that are easy to communicate with. So, yeah, no, I definitely, I feel like I speak for a lot of people on here where we appreciate your series that you're doing here. Cause I think you're certainly giving a lot of exposure to, you know, the positives of the community and mm -hmm. even just the networking and the connections that you're making. And you guys mentioned the one, one of your videos where, maybe two of those cards are eBay. Everything else was community based where, right. you know, this is a testament. That's a testament, you know, what you're doing here. So definitely right. appreciate, appreciate all of that. And just, uh, again, enjoy being on for another episode here. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's been great having you on here and, uh, <clears throat> appreciate the kind words. So that's, that's been the goal of this and, and just giving exposure to people on that Instagram community. It's, there was an extra little excitement in my, in my heart when I, I got the account going, you know, when I was posting yeah. Barrasso and then I decided Tebow was going to be my guy. And I was going back and rediscovering all these nineties cards from my childhood. It, it, nothing will replace that feeling. I mean, yeah, COVID was going on, but the weather was beautiful and it was uh, it was a fun few months there gathering all those Tebow cards down or ga gathering them all up. And so uh, I can't wait for uh Yeah to continue that, but it's exciting news because the next couple of weeks I'm, I'm going to try to fill in with people that are well known. So the next week, uh, unless things get changed again, Aaron and Eric from center ice card cast, I'm going to have them on. And, and I'm really excited to talk to them about their experience, not just podcasting, but uh, also having Billy Celio on many times and being able to talk to somebody who is making these cards and, and they're both very different people, as you know. I mean, Aaron is a very, very laid back guy, but he had the chance to meet his hero, you know, Jonas Enroth. He got to hang out with him for crying out loud mm -hmm. um, and and talk to him and and unfortunately didn't get to see him play. But uh, that was that was an amazing experience. And Eric, you know, just from me listening to him, he he's a very factual person. He is very supportive of Upper Deck and, and that relationship that they have going. And he does a good job of standing up for them when, you know, random people, the Upper Deck sucks. They can't do cards. It's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's look at like the whole picture here. I think yeah. he does a good job of um, bringing out that information from Billy and, and design wise, which I know we both like. And uh, and he's a very passionate collector. And I think that is something that I'm, I'm really excited to talk to and, and get that out there and put a face to them because they don't often do the visual. They don't do visual podcasts and they do more of the just audio stuff. But uh, I know a lot of people really like their content and includes myself and you. And I had it on at work. I was, you know, in my double prep getting stuff ready yeah. for the end of the week and uh, got to listen to where the Jersey card idea came from the hundo P uh, and all these other st other inserts. It was really uh, really, really cool. So yeah, I'm going to have them on. And then I'd really like to get the uh, Kirk McLean collector on here uh, the week after them. I don't know if you've seen his page, but oh, yeah. uh, get him on here. Um, but also, uh, you know, him being a 90s guy, it really got me thinking about, you know, bringing back Nick's Pops collection, uh, getting him on here with uh, Miles, Hockey Card Nostalgia, um, those two guys, or, or maybe a third that collects nineties with the Kirk McLean collection. It would be really nice to have a nineties group back well, and yeah, representing sure. that group. I'm not sure if you, you probably follow the Beezer collector as well. Oh yeah. Um, and then you've had Tom Barrasso collector on already. Oh, Nick's so cool. Or, yeah, I, I love seeing those collections where it's not flurry stuff, but it's like, I appreciate everything about the nineties goalies. Yep. Yeah. So I love seeing those uh, their pages because they're always lighting it up with awesome stuff. Oh man, it, it just all all three of those guys I mentioned are just in their own way. You know, Miles with his storytelling with statistics and and whatnot. Kirk McLean cl collection with the setups and the photo, like the design of the card itself. Like you and I definitely talk about that a lot. 
uh, Pops collection, just with the sets that he's put together of his, you know, all those 90s sets, especially the really shiny ones. And then he's kind of dipped his toes into modern too, which yeah. I, I can't wait to talk to him about like the, you know, differences and, and similarities yeah. that he likes. And then uh, I think another good pairing would be indigenous rookie cards and uh, Asian card collector. I oh, think yeah. those two with, obviously they have similarities in like the types of players that they're collecting, but just uh, how unique of a collection that is and how many, how many people have, you know, been interested in, and wanted to learn more about their collection. Uh, it would be fun to get them both on here and just uh, share their stories uh, or individually, even um, I know that, that neither of them have come on this channel yeah. yet. And so, yeah, there's some, some people out there that uh, I would love to get on here, but yeah, next week is going to be Aaron and Eric. And so hopefully people are, going to look forward to that and uh you and i will definitely have to revisit an, on another episode uh flurry's uh season i think that would be really fun to do once it's hopefully wrapped up way down the road, down the road yeah <laughs> um but uh and then just you know he's gonna have some cards coming out in premiere and then hopefully some other sets uh in april uh it'd be really interesting to, to see how well he continues to be represented uh in the future so yeah, but thanks again, Chris, for coming on, man. I uh, really appreciate the time. And it was fun talking about some of these cards that uh, don't get much love uh, in the hobby. I, hopefully they get a little bit more after mm -hmm. this episode. And uh, yeah, uh, good luck in the giveaway, by the way. I'm going to be doing that here uh, before I go and get my uh, classroom ready. So Yeah, oh yeah. It's uh, it's 930 here for me. So I'm looking for the right. clock going. I got to get up early, and uh, but I'll be ready for that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again, Chris. Thanks to everybody for listening and watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a great week. Hey, thanks, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome.